This video is brought to you by Audible. The increased use of lithium-ion batteries in everything from portable electronics to grid-scale energy storage has also spurred on battery research. It's the never-ending quest for the next big thing. And for years now, solid-state batteries have been promised as that thing. Companies like Samsung, QuantumScape, and Toyota have all announced major breakthroughs in solid-state batteries. But why all the interest, and when will they actually arrive? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. Lithium-ion batteries have had a massive impact on the world, unlocking the potential in portable electronics, and more recently, electric vehicles and grid-scale energy storage. However, the aspect that a lot of us worry about when using a lithium-ion battery is safety, which is one of the big advantages of solid-state batteries, combined with its high energy density, as well as reduced size and weight. Current lithium-ion batteries use a liquid electrolyte solution, and if they aren't properly managed or are damaged in an accident, they can swell from temperature variations or even leak from mechanical stress. The result of that can lead to fire. Now, on top of that, most EVs employing lithium-ion batteries have a range of 300 miles or less, a long charging time, not to mention the loss of capacity over time with each charging cycle. In some cases, that's as much as a third of capacity lost within a decade. But technology doesn't stand still. There's always ongoing research and refinements that continue to make batteries better and more resilient looking for new chemical storage technologies that can increase efficiency and safety while reducing size, weight, and environmental impacts. And that's where solid-state batteries come in. To understand why, let's take a moment and walk through the main differences between today's lithium-ion batteries and a solid-state battery. In a battery, the electrolyte is the conductive chemical mixture that allows the current to flow between the cathode, which is the positively charged electrode, and the anode, which is the negatively charged electrode. In the case of lithium-ion batteries, what separates the anode from the cathode is a liquid electrolyte solution. While a solid-state battery, you probably guessed, is a solid electrolyte. Now, liquid electrolytes have some disadvantages, such as high flammability, risk of leakage, and electrolytic decomposition at higher voltages. Now, while batteries that utilize solid electrolytes have been promised to lower costs and increase performance with incredible safety. Now, if you're interested in a deeper dive, I've got other videos on this exact topic. But one of the biggest benefits of solid electrolytes is the ability to use other anode materials like lithium metal. The potential increase in energy density for a lithium metal anode battery has been known since the mid-1970s. But it's also known that lithium metal anodes have problems when used with liquid electrolytes. In this case, dendrites form when the battery is being charged. Dendrites are like stalactite formations that grow from the surface of the anode and can lead to reduce energy density, and they can even short-circuit the cell. The dendrites can puncture the separator between the anode and the cathode, and that's when you get exploding batteries. Now, it's widely believed to make a lithium metal anode battery, it's necessary to employ a solid state separator that's roughly as conductive as liquid, reduced dendrite formations, and it doesn't react with the metallic lithium. Today, there are more than 25 kinds of solid state electrolytes, such as oxides, sulfides, phosphates, polyesters. But I'm going to stop there because I don't want to get any flashbacks of my 1970s childhood. The promise of solid-state batteries has been growing for years, like hundreds of years. It goes all the way back to Michael Faraday in the 1800s when he laid the foundation with the discovery of solid electrolytes made of silver sulfide and lead fluoride. And by the end of the 1950s, several electrochemical systems used solid electrolytes. Later in 1990, Oak Ridge National Laboratory developed a brand new version of solid-state batteries, which was later incorporated into thin film lithium ion batteries. But since 2015, big players have been investing a lot of money into this research. In this crazy mix of chemistries and technologies, there's been a lot of buzz recently about new investments in the field. For example, Volkswagen got a 5% stake in QuantumScape. Dyson acquired Sakti, Bosch acquired SEEO, and Johnson Battery Technologies sold its solid-state batteries to BP. Some electric vehicle companies joined the game as well. BMW established a partnership with Solid Power, and Ionic Materials, a company that's in my neck of the woods here in Massachusetts, works with Hyundai. The reason for the interest from EV makers is because of how much energy you can pack in per kilogram, which results in either a size and weight reduction if you keep the same battery pack kilowatt hour rating, or increased driving range if you keep the battery pack weight the same. So keep an EV battery pack at 70 kilowatt hours with less weight, or increase it to something like 120 kilowatt hours with the same weight. And the benefits don't stop there. You get batteries that operate within a wider range of temperatures, making them more robust, as well as more eco-friendly compared to conventional batteries. And there's been a lot of buzz in recent announcements about solid-state batteries, coming from people and companies that have visionary teams and leaders that are pushing the envelope. But before I get to some of those announcements, I always love learning about what makes them tick, and I get a lot of inspiration from that. It's perfect for today's sponsor, Audible. 
I listened to the audiobook Elon Musk by Ashley Vance, which gave me a deep understanding for why Elon is doing what he's doing. It really inspired me, and I probably will for you too. Now, I've been an Audible subscriber forever, seriously. I listen to audiobooks when driving, or in the case of my Tesla, when it's driving me, and also walking the dog, mowing the lawn, you name it. They have everything from nonfiction to fiction. With a subscription, you get one credit every month to use on any title, which are yours to keep forever. And there are thousands of titles and series to choose from, and being able to listen on the go or while doing some chores really makes your day so much more enjoyable. I absolutely love it. If you want to listen to Elon Musk or any other audiobooks, go to audible.com slash undecided or text undecided to 500-500. Best part is that you can try Audible for free for 30 days. Thanks to Audible and to all of you for supporting the channel. So what are some of these interesting solid state battery announcements? Well, Samsung, for example, has developed a solid state battery prototype that solves the dendrite problem by using silver carbon to form the anode, achieving a battery that's only five micrometers thick. This ultra thin silver carbon nanocomposite layer allowed the company to boost energy density up to 900 watt hours per liter. And for comparison, today's best lithium ion batteries have energy densities that are just below about 700 watt hours per liter. The expansion of the company's prototype would enable the EV to travel up to 500 miles or 800 kilometers on a single charge with a life cycle of more than 1,000 charges. Now you're talking about a battery pack that would last for over 500,000 miles. From the startup perspective, California-based QuantumScape, which is actually backed by Volkswagen, released a report in December of 2020 showing that its solid-state cells can charge to 80% of capacity in 15 minutes, and retains more than 80% of its capacity after 800 charging cycles, and also has a volumetric energy density of more than 1,000 watt-hours per liter. In its battery, nickel-manganese cobalt oxide is used for the cathode, and the anode is made of pure lithium metal, just like I mentioned earlier. As for timing, this isn't supposed to hit initial production until 2024. Now, Toyota stands on top of the global heap with over 1,000 patents involving solid state batteries. The EVs being developed by Toyota in partnership with Panasonic are supposed to have twice the range of a vehicle using a standard lithium ion battery. The most impressive part, if it's true, is that Toyota aims to retain 90% of the battery's performance over a 30 year lifespan, and company officials said that it's capable of recharging from zero to full in 10 minutes. Toyota is supposed to be unveiling their solid state battery EV this year, but they've also stated that it won't be in mass production until 2025. And another company, Bolaray, is supplying batteries for use in Mercedes-Benz buses. Their lithium metal polymer operates at 80 degrees Celsius, so it self-stabilizes whether external temperatures are negative 30 Celsius or 65 Celsius, and it doesn't contain cobalt, nickel, or solvents. Now, while they're working at very low scale right now, their next generation products are expected to start delivering to OEMs in 2026. The benefits of this type of battery could give electric vehicles a wider operating range in extreme temperatures. You're probably seeing the trend here. 2024, 2025, and 2026. That's when they're expecting to see these batteries start hitting production. Now, why is that? Well, there's still several issues to iron out on this technology, one of which is manufacturing. Most of these batteries require very different manufacturing techniques and machinery than traditional batteries. They require extremely dry conditions during production, and the raw lithium and material capacity isn't there yet. One company is taking the manufacturing first approach to solid state batteries in order to reduce the cost of production. The American company Solid Power has been all in on solid state batteries and large scale production processes for the past several years. In December of 2020, they began pilot production of a 22 layer all solid state battery cell in Colorado. Their batteries are manufactured in a way that's compatible with the industry standard roll to roll manufacturing used in current lithium ion production. They partner with BMW and Ford. And if you wanna look a little further out into the future, there's also glass electrolytes to consider. The lithium ion battery co-inventor and just general rock star, John Goodenough applied for a patent for this new technology in 2020 with Maria Helena Braga. And researchers say the new battery technology delivers three times the energy storage capacity compared to typical lithium ion batteries. Tests on the technology also suggest perhaps thousands of charge and discharge cycles, again, more than the typical battery, all while withstanding a wider range of temperatures between negative 20 to 60 degrees Celsius. Now, carrying out this glass electrolyte concept, the University of Bayreuth, together with Tesla and Varta Microbattery, will develop novel battery separators made of glass. And the project named GlassLib, or Glass Separators for Lithium Ion Batteries, I have no idea if that's how you say it, started March 1st of 2020. Considering the increased interest in solid state batteries, governments around the globe have been putting some money to make it happen. For example, the Japanese government has been supporting the domestic development of solid state batteries to remain competitive against China. 
Japan is organizing a fund of around 2 trillion yen, which is about $19.2 billion, to promote decarbonization technology. Policymakers will continue to use these funds to provide subsidies of hundreds of billions of yen in order to fund the development of the new batteries. Although the COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant economic impact, the potential market size of solid-state batteries is expected to grow to over $6 billion by 2030. Regardless of the underlying chemistry or manufacturing techniques, there's a lot of moving parts to bring solid-state batteries to market. All of these companies are still refining and testing their batteries. The mid-decade release timelines doesn't mean that all of these will be producing at mass production scale with high yields and low cost. That's going to take time. When we'll be seeing mass-produced solid-state batteries in our EVs, portable electronics, and other devices at an affordable price is still uncertain, but it's probably further up than you might think. Now, when do you think solid-state batteries will be coming to market and mainstream? Jump in the comments and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I have linked to right here. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you think I've earned it. And as always, thanks to all of my patrons and a big welcome to new Supporter Plus member, Lawrence Plotkin. Thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.